Solstice of Heroes has just kicked off on July 31st, and with it comes tons of stuff to do, lots of things to grind on, and of course, more loot to score. However, there are a couple of things that might seem a bit confusing, especially if you're a casual player. So let's dive into how you can get started, what to do, and ultimately, how to get your power level 400 armor. Guardians, what is going on y'all? Sly here, back at it once again with another D2 video for you. And this time we're diving into my Solstice of Heroes guide. Now the summer event, which is just a fancy way to celebrate our third moments of triumph, has dropped with quite a cool way to kill some time before Forsaken. There's a lot to go over and lots of questions to answer, so let's drop a chit chat because I'll ramble on forever if I don't, and we'll get right to it. So first off, Eververse has a slew of new items to gander at. Head over to the Eververse booth and hover over one of the new engrams. Go ahead and click details. Here you will find everything categorized and you can view it all by sections. There's a lot to check out and a lot of new stuff to get in just under a month's time. The first time you log in, each character will get a freebie from Tess, so it's a great way to start off the festival. Now, to get started guys, you want to first log into the character that has the most completions of adventures and grab the most region chest in Destiny 2. Adventures and chests are character based and not account based. So log in to your main character first and then go ahead and head to the tower. You don't want to log into your lowest character or like your, your third character and then grab all this stuff because then you're locked and you're going to have to try to get all these things done with it first. So just go ahead and get on your main character to start off with. As soon as you land in the tower, go ahead, take a look around, and then head over to the statue of heroes and click on it. This will start up a little introduction sequence, which is pretty cool. It takes you to an area of the city that looks like it's set in the past. The traveler is whole again, the city isn't being rebuilt, it's not half destroyed. It's almost like we're stepping back in time. Go ahead and explore the area and then head over to Ikora when you're done. Now once you click on her, you'll be whisked away to the first mission within Destiny 2, Homecoming. Now this is the first of the redo missions, so they will be a little different. And you're going to see all kinds of different elemental orbs popping up all over the place as well. Solar, Arc, and Void on top of your normal orbs of light. Don't worry about them, you're not missing out on anything just right now. Just keep going and partake in the mission. It ends a little early, and then if you're lucky, it will send you back to the tower without disconnecting you five times in a row. Once you make it back to the original tower, head to the statue once again, and this time you're going to be given your starting armor set. It's the destroyed set from the vanilla campaign, it's called Scorched, and it starts you off at power level 200. Now this armor kind of sucks, it has 5 mobility, 1 resilience, and 0 recovery, at least for the titan. So it does take some getting used to, and on top of that, there are no mods available or shaders. Well, kinda. We'll get to that here in a second. So now that you have the armor, go ahead and put all of it on, and then head back to the statue. This time, you'll get to actually see the menu. This is all of your triumphs put into bounty form. The more triumphs you turn in, the higher your points, and of course, the higher your points, the more loot you can get from the top bar there. The t-shirt unlocks a little over 200 points, I think it's like 230 or so. That will give you the ability to buy it from the Bungie store with a code. So go ahead and grab all of the bounties that you see in front of you. Just start at the beginning, work your way to the right and click on all of them. They will be put into your pursuits tab within your menu. Now more than likely you have already completed quite a few of them. Go ahead and click on them anyway and be sure to hit the right bumper and tab over to the second page. There are more waiting for you over on page 2. Once you grab all of them, go ahead and head back into your inventory and then over to your pursuits tab and now you can actually turn in the ones that you've already completed. Even though when you hovered over it, it says completed in the menu, you still have to physically turn it in for the bounty to count and to rack up points. I know it's a little odd, but whatever. So just click on all the ones with an exclamation point and it will narrow them down a little bit. Also the triumph for bounty completions doesn't count these triumphs as bounties themselves. You actually have to go over and grab ones from the Vanguard or the Crucible and complete those for it to count. Also, yes, the public events are not retroactive. You're going to need to complete 25 more on top of what you already have. The rewards are a little lame this year, besides the shirt of course, and the ship, it isn't too bad, but it is one hell of a grind to get an okay looking ship. However, it will be one of the rarest by the end of the festival. So it's a bragging piece if nothing else, and we'll talk about that here in a second. Anyways, now let's go ahead and talk about the armor. So, 
Your first green set of armor is called your Scorch set. It stays at light level 200 and you cannot infuse it. In order to upgrade this armor set to the next set, which is called the Rekindled, your blue set, you have to complete various tasks listed on each armor piece. The tasks will vary depending on your class, but in the end, the objectives are all the same. For instance, to complete the helmet for the hunter, you need to complete the Spark Redo mission, collect 90 solar orbs in the EDZ, and get 10 kills in the Crucible. But for the Titan, it's complete the Spark Redo mission, 150 arc orbs from anywhere, and then 10 kills in the Crucible. However, for the Titan Arms, there you have to get 90 solar orbs, but they're in strike. So each class will end up doing the exact same thing by the time it's all said and done, just some of them have different orders. So basically, to finish upgrading the armor set, you have to complete all 5 remastered missions, get 10 kills in the Crucible, 30 super kills in the Crucible, defeat 50 mini bosses, do 10 heroic public events, and then get orbs in varying places. Like I said, once again, it depends on your class. For instance, solar orbs and strikes, or void orbs in the EDZ, arc orbs anywhere. But again, classes will switch these up, so one class might have to get void orbs in the EDZ, while the other might have to get solar. Now, everyone is still trying to tackle just how to get the most orbs or how these elemental orbs work, but it seems like as long as that you're on your particular subclass, then that elemental orb will spawn. For instance, if you want Void Orbs, then make sure you're using your Void Walker, Sentinel, or Night Stalker. If you want Arc Orbs, then of course make sure you're using an Arc subclass. It seems that multi-kills and yellow bar enemies or majors drop orbs the most. If you're shooting normal red bars, then it seems to be random. Sometimes they drop one or two, sometimes they don't. It doesn't look like weapons really matter, but it couldn't hurt to double up and deck yourself out with all of one element. Also, each day a new element will be featured. For instance, the first day, which is the July 31st, day 1, is the Day of Flame, which increases solar damage. You do this by continually picking up elemental solar orbs. If you look in your menu, it will stack up to 5 times, and it will boost the damage of your weapons and abilities. So the more you kill, the more orbs you get, and the more damage you will ultimately do. Now it has a countdown timer, and if you fail to get an orb within that amount of time, it will knock you down a rank, and then you have to work your way back up. Now it could also be that the higher your stack, the more the orbs drop. I'm still experimenting with it, like I said, this has only been the first couple hours of this event out, so I'm still you know, tinkering around, but it seems like that's the case. Now with these elemental days, there is a sort of shader that will be for sale through Eververse. Notice the timed box on the right hand side within the Eververse menu. This is kind of like Chroma from D1. It's basically a shader that you put onto your festival armor, and when you match it with your subclass, it will glow bright. Since today is a day of flame, she's selling solar. If tomorrow was void, then more than likely Tess will sell void. Now you can also get these things for free from drops. Every time you turn in a Solstice Engram, it has the chance to drop one of these. So it's always a good thing to pay attention to which element the day is revolving around and use it to your advantage. Especially if you're out in the wild doing heroic public events, it really, really helps out. I was using the Mita Mini tool on the solar day and it was absolutely just destroying everything. It was actually a lot of fun to use. So back to the armor. Once you complete all of your requirements for the green set, you're going to head back to the statue and then it will change everything over to a blue set of armor, which will be called the Rekindled set. Once again, this set will have new requirements and once those are met, it will then be changed over to its final state called Resplendent, which is 400 power legendary armor. The green armor starts off at 200, blue is set to 300, and legendary, which is the final set, is of course 400, and then after that it's going to be Masterworked. Now, if you're using high power level weapons, then you'll be higher than the level of the armor, of course. So even though the armor is only 200, your weapons will bump you up to something like 283, 285, somewhere in between there. And of course, the same goes for the blue set as well. So to change your armor from blue to legendary, you once again have to play the missions which are located around the tower. All five must be completed, and of course, they will be a little harder this time. You then have to complete three heroic strikes, the nightfall, 10 adventures, win 5 crucible matches, and then a bunch of element stuff, like 80 power weapon kills, either solar void or arc depending on your class, and you also have to get 200 super kills, 120 grenade kills, 60 melee kills, 160 energy weapon kills. Like I said before, all of these kills will be element based and it will differ per class. For the warlock for instance, it's 200 arc super kills, 120 grenade solar kills, 
60 arc melee kills, and 160 void energy weapon kills. The Hunter and Titan will have the same numbers, but like I said, just different elements. Next, you can take your 400 set of gear and turn it into a Masterwork set. So, to take your Resplendent armor set and turn it into Masterwork Resplendent, you will have to complete the Prestige Nightfall within the point threshold for that specific strike. Then, complete 5 heroic strikes with at least one clanmate in the group. After that, complete Prestige Leviathan, then reach the Valor rank of Legend in the Crucible, and finally defeat 10 bosses or ultras. Once you have fully unlocked the armor set, there will be ornaments at the bottom that will allow you to change back to the scorched or rekindled armor appearance while still keeping the masterwork and 400 power level. Now remember back at the beginning of this video we talked about that ship that's going to be rare? Well the only way to get that ship is to completely finish the armor on all three characters. And that my friend is going to be a grind and a half, a tedious grind at that. Of course, a lot of these we will complete together, like you can be in a Heroic Strike or the Nightfall using a Void Auto Rifle with an Arc Subclass that will get you your Arc Melees, Super Kills, Void Energy Kills, and completing Heroic Strikes all in one go. So it won't really be that bad, but it's still going to be a grind. So far, the worst seems to be getting 30 Super Kills in the Crucible. Just about everyone is currently on this step, and they're all trying to get it done right now. Everyone's running around in a group of six, so one uses their Super, everyone else collects the orbs, then the next uses their super, everyone collects the orbs, and it just keeps going like that. Everyone's huddling up as a group, even more so than usual, and it gets kind of annoying. It's a fast way to get it done, don't get me wrong, but when everyone is doing it, it gets pretty annoying. Also, PS, and by the way, private matches do not work, I definitely tried. But as of right now, that is about it, Guardians. No word on if there will be more bounties to complete or other activities to dive into later on in the festival. I was hoping the event would update things weekly, but now I'm not so sure. I guess we'll find out soon enough. But that is it, ladies and gents. I hope this answers some of your questions out there, and also feel free to ask in the comments down below if you need help with something, have any questions. Myself or one of the Guardians of the Nation will stop by and help you with what you need to know. So enjoy the festival and the new loot, my friends, because soon after we have the armor, Forsaken will be knocking on our doorstep, and that is something I cannot effing wait for. Anyways, guys, I am out of here. As always, thank you all so much for supporting and watching Sly Nation. Feel free to check me out on Twitter or Facebook at Sly Nation, Sly Nation Gaming on the FB. Subscribe for more Destiny 2 Forsaken and Anthem videos. Spank the thumbs up only if you enjoyed yourself. And keep those eyes open for more videos coming out here soon. But until then, this is your dude Sly, and I'll catch you all next time.